Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Week zero has ended, and we got a lot of blowouts. We got a lot of blowouts, I'm telling you. Fortunately, I couldn't find the Indiana State Eastern Illinois game, but Indiana State won against Eastern Illinois 26 to 21 in one of the better games of week zero. Again, couldn't find the game. You know, ESPN Plus really isn't good with the college athletics side of things when it comes to production because they usually hand it off to, you know, their, the, uh, the schools to produce the games and it just doesn't work out very well. Um, but yeah, most of these other games here were indeed blowouts as a lot of people expected. You know, a lot of people expected these games were going to be blowouts. Um, there's actually two games still going on right now in San Jose State, Southern Utah, and New Mexico State UTEP. UTEP is beating up on the Aggies of New Mexico State. Right now, it's 30-3. to That score will likely change, um, but there's only about a few minutes left in the fourth quarter there. And... Um, it, again, San Jose State, Southern Utah, it's an FBS versus FCS game. So you know 95% of the time that it's going to go to the FBS team with getting that W. And it won't be you know, a hard W. It will be the easiest W you can get. Uh, Hawaii, UCLA, supposed to be a little bit better than that. And it, it, it turned into a blowout really quick. Zach Charbonnet got three touchdowns, only on six carries, and it was over like that. You know, Hawaii made a couple of big errors, especially I think it was like a punt or something where the kicker was trying to get, or rather the punter was trying to get the ball, and he just kneeled down and, you know, conceded possession to UCLA or, you know, and it was just, it was just not pretty for the Rainbow Warriors. Just not pretty. It was like a broken record out there. And speaking of broken, I don't know how UConn is going to feel, you know, after getting sweltering, you know, after getting, just getting whooped, not sweltering, getting whooped by Fresno State on turf that was 120 degrees and could melt your shoes. They got whooped. The Huskies did. 45 to nothing. Didn't even score any points. UConn didn't even score. What's wrong with you? Why didn't you score? So yeah, yeah, those are most of those games. But there's two that I want to talk about here real quick. You know, real quick, let's run them down. Illinois, Nebraska. You know, Brett Bielema debut as a head coach at Illinois. You know, remember he was at Arkansas for a little bit, and then he. That apparently he disappeared. Like I've completely forgot that he disappeared from the scene of coaching. You know, he was like in the NFL, but then he just. And, but I mean, who, who was following Brett Bielema in the NFL? Come on, stop it. Um, but anyway, Illinois, Nebraska. Yeah, this was wrong. this was honestly on Scott Frost here. This was really, really rough for for the Cornhuskers. Really, really rough. You know, these two teams really aren't expected to do anything in the Big Ten this year, but the way Nebraska, the way Nebraska handled this game was all, they, they literally fell into Illinois' hand, into Illinois' hands in this game. They literally fell into their hands. And, I mean, Illinois was out there. They were out there, you know, doing man-to-man, -man, you know, literally no separation could be made by the Nebraska receivers. None at all. You know, Adrian Martinez looked flustered out there a little bit, you know, and Nebraska just could not get any traction going. Hell, they were down 30 to 9 at one point, I believe. You know, they were down 30 to 9. You know, they were they were, they were getting whooped out there. They were getting whooped by the second string quarterback because Brandon Peters hurt himself. He got he probably injured his collarbone, you know, on like the first couple plays of the of the, um, of the game. And Illinois, you know, they, they 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 kept Nebraska in it, but honestly, you know, this was all on Scott Frost. Horrid play calling. Horrid play calling. We're talking just some of the dumbest decision making I've ever seen in my entire life from Scott Frost because there was a point late in the game where there was just a bunch of time ticking off the clock 
and you know, I mean, I just I just don't know what I don't know what Nebraska was doing. And then we got to talk about the kicking errors for this game. Oh boy, oh boy, so many missed field goals and PATs, especially that last PAT. That has got to sting. Oh boy, Nebraska's kicker's gonna be, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna need an ice bath for for that. He's gonna he's gonna need something. He he must have been seeing ghosts out there. He must have been seeing something out there because there's no way you should be missing extra points. No way you should be missing extra points. They aren't that they aren't that they aren't that far away. They're not that far away at all. But whatever, whatever, right? You know. And I'm sure the Oklahoma fans are going to be chiming in here, you know, because oh, well, Nebraska should be at 11 a.m. kickoff. Well, it is. Nebraska's not good, and that's why that game is at 11 a.m. That's why that game is at 11 a.m. People were joking about it this um, earlier this evening. That's why that game is at 11 a.m. You know why, Oklahoma fans. You know why. You know why. Nebraska's just not a good team. It's going to be unfortunate when Oklahoma drops 70 on them in a couple weeks' time. Let's talk about the real game of the day. The real game of the day was the MEAC SWAC Challenge kickoff, sponsored by Cricket and ESPN, of course. Let me tell you, this was a statement by the MEAC. This was a statement by NC Central. This was a statement win for this conference. And for the Eagles, you know, nobody expected NC Central to win this game. In fact, Al Alcorn was favored by 15 points, I believe, on the betting lines and stuff like that. But somehow, some way, the Eagles held down, stayed strong, and went out there and harassed Felix Harper. Harassed that man out there. It felt like they sent 17 guys out you know, each and every snap. And there was really only like four pass rushes each and every time. And NC Central got, got something big. They got a big punt return TD, and they also got the backs. They got the running backs, you know, just running all over the Braves, running all over them. And there was just no stopping the onslaught of running backs, you know, it, it felt it, you know, it felt like this game was going to be busted wide open for for somebody. You know, there was a couple big plays in this game. It felt like somebody was going to, you know, who was going to strike first? Who was going to strike with that big, big play? And it turned out to be that punt return. Honestly, it turned out to be that punt return that NC Central had that got the spark rolling. That got things really, really rolling. I mean, it it just. It, it was not a good time, you know, for the Braves of Alcorn State. It was not a good time because this is the third straight big loss that they've had. Third straight big loss that t both the 2018 and 2019 Celebration Bowls on big national stages where they lost, and now this game where they've lost as well. And uh, once again, the Miak wins in this challenge. I believe it's I believe it's 11 to five now, if I'm not mistaken, for the Miak over the SWAC in this in this um, challenge. And it just does not bode well, you know, for Alcorn State because they have a gauntlet, you know, to go through in the SWAC. They have a gauntlet to go through. And remember, like I said, you know, unlike some places of some verified places already have, and you know, it, it, it's fact now that Alcorn State has only two home games in the SWAC because of what happened in the spring. So, you know, it's going to be a tough, tough road. It's going to be a lot of trips for the Braves. It's going to be a lot of trips to try and get to Atlanta once again. It's going to be a lot of going to be a lot of trips in NC Central. What a fantastic job. We're talking. This was some great defense. You held this team, this Alcorn team, to only 14 points. You know, and this team could throw the ball. Remember, Felix Harper can't sling that rock, but they didn't allow him to. They didn't allow him to. And they got those backs rolling, and they got them strolling up and down the field. You know, it, it did look. It, you know, this game did look pretty all the time. You know, there was some. Of course, there were going to be some rap errors. Of course, of course, there was going to be some college kickers. Of course, you know. But 
A. <laughs> Itzy Central made a statement. They made a statement that said, The MEAC isn't dead. It's not dead just yet. It's still alive, it's still kicking, and it's still here. You know. You know. Man. Man. I I'm just so happy college football is back. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so hyped. And the season does not stop there. It does not stop there. We got a long road to January. We got a long road to January. And I cannot wait to keep going with you all. And I'll be here all season long with you. So, with all that being said, week zero is pretty much wrapped up. I know the games will end after midnight or so, probably, but I wanted to get this out right now because these week zero reactions and, you know, I mean, this was, this was really, 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 really an interesting day to start the college football season, an interesting day, and I wonder, you know, Again, for a lot of these teams, I'm not going to see a lot of HBCU games, obviously. I'm going to see a couple more before the Celebration Bowl in December. But other than that, not really going to be keeping up with HBCU football. And for a lot of these teams as well, in the lower tier conferences, you know, and UConn, and New Mexico State, because they're both independent, it's not going to be able to see a lot of their games either, you know, especially in Nebraska. I don't think, you know... I know I'm going to see that Nebraska-Oklahoma game on September the 18th because it's on Fox. It's on Big Fox. I mean, who wouldn't see that game? It's on an actual network that people can get. You can't get Flow Sports. You have to go to streaming sites to get to try and get Flow Sports, you know? You know, you have to try and m maneuver. Who, who knows what Bali Sports Arizona is? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? Because I don't know what that is. Or rather, Bali Sports New Mexico, or whatever, whatever it's called, New Mexico State, whatever it's called, I don't know what it's called, you know, Bali Sports, whatever. Again, low sports is terrible. Anything with Bali Sports too is now terrible. So you know, let's try and get out of, let's try and get those things destroyed as quickly as possible. But yeah. Um, it's going to be a long season, I can tell you that right now. And week one, really, this this was week one. You know, they can call it week zero all they want to, but this was week one for all intents and purposes. And it really just goes to show you that the pageantry, the, the tradition, the celebration, the, the the heritage, and all all the things in between back for college football. And it's going to be... A long long season once again to just talk about to have fun you know react to it and just you know again be happy sad angry and all those different emotions that come with it so I can't wait to keep going with you all this season and let's let's, let's just do this man so my week one preview will be coming either Monday or Tuesday it won't be Wednesday. It'll be either Monday or Tuesday because the Wednesday will, there will be a game. I'm probably not going to watch that game, but there will be a game on Mon on Wednesday, excuse me. And we'll talk about a couple more HBCU games. We'll talk about that big Sunday game, and we'll talk about my six games to see for Saturday because there's a lot of there's a lot of big games on Saturday, you know. September 4th. It's going to be a lot of big games that day. But I'll talk to you about that. In a couple days. But until then, I'll see you tomorrow because we got to go over those indoor football games and stuff like that. We got to go over that. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I forgot. You know, there was a couple things that I forgot from last week as far as indoor football is concerned. But we'll talk about that tomorrow, right after the Arizona Rattlers game, or rather the Arizona Sioux Falls game. Excuse me, not just the Arizona Rattlers. Both Sioux Falls and Arizona are playing. <laughs> but again, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and y'all have a good night, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.